This one's a weird one. I don't know. This one, I can't. The Spotify car thing is real. And they started to send it out to people. It's a very limited release. You have to be a Spotify premium member and you actually don't pay for it. If you're selected, they just send it to you because they're doing some sort of study, some sort of testing around this thing. See if people want to use it in the U.S. They're still calling it car thing, eh? That's the actual name is car thing. And it is this display that fits kind of into your vent in your car. It has a big dial on it, a little screen, and it connects via Bluetooth to your vehicle, but then also to your smartphone. It has to pull information from your smartphone. And so essentially it's a remote. So I guess your phone is free to do whatever you use it for, maybe nav. Or maybe it just stays in your pocket. And then you immediately start interacting with your Spotify content on the car thing. Sure. <laughs> You're smirking. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> they, have a na- they have two navs going on. Weird. Oh, this? You're talking about this individual? Yeah, this, just, this picture just... Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, got a lot, me tickled. A, a lot of people prefer the smartphone nav because sure, dep- yeah. depending on your vehicle, it might not be all that updated or comprehensive it doesn't have as many points of of interest it certainly doesn't show traffic for a lot of different in-car systems yeah i'm guessing you could use that screen for something else if anything and then use the nav on your dash i'm just waking i'm just making this way more complicated but anyways yeah yeah it's uh i mean this setup that this person has is uh quite chaotic obviously not ideal but this is the reality for a lot of people because in-car systems have sucked Mm -hmm. So they end up mounting their phone and then Spotify is like, (laughs) okay, you're busy looking at your nav on your phone. So now we're going to give you this other screen, but then it's clamped on to the, I mean, this is just a nightmare scenario in the whole, the whole cockpit. Just another wire that's coming out as well. Cause you got to power it from the cigarette or the 12 hole or whatever it is. Either way, it's interesting because Spotify is not a hardware company and it's tough in the hardware business. Now, they don't have a problem making money, but I haven't been such a huge fan of their mobile app. It's kind of... I'll jump in there every so often. Mm -hmm. But there's like weirdness, lack of responsiveness when you switch from portrait to landscape and it's just... (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. They they seem to be indicating like seem, the indication seems to be that it's a fact finding mission. This person's installation looks cleaner. Of course, their hand is covering the cable. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe. I just don't like that. I have to that I'm connecting that to the car and then the phone to that. It's like, mm-hmm. is that really going to be smooth sailing every time? Yeah. See, really what Spotify has to do is just cut the deals with the automakers so that the in-display uh, system has a Spotify button. Yeah. And then it launches me to that interface. Just make like a custom API and give it to the I'm sure this is very difficult to do because they need stuff so far in advance because of the sure. transit uh, transportation people and this is part of the reason why in in dash systems are always out they're outdated when you get them mm-hmm. for most manufacturers because they needed approval so far in advance and so making their own hardware is not the move you think well it is for that reason that i just mentioned it's hard to get your get your button inside of those systems that already exist i mean we did see for example ford made the deal recently with google mm. to have a tighter integration essentially run android in a car so that's better. Then I'll just launch the, but maybe they're targeting older vehicles. There's a lot of older vehicles on the road Yeah. that, that uh, don't have much of a smart interface going on. Yeah. But, but even oh, then, okay. if they decide okay. to Uh-oh. sell it, how much is it going to be? Well, what if it comes with your premium subscription? This thing? Well, if that it, right now does, they're sending. I mean, that's great. Right now they're sending it to people who have a premium subscription. Not everybody, but that's what they're doing right now. That'll be cool. I if mean, that's the case if it's free <laughs> with your premium. Subscription. I don't think it's going to be free forever, but maybe there's like a another tier of premium where it's somehow 
This is bundled in? Yeah, somehow yeah. it's included. I don't know how they're going to do it. It also is voice activated, right? And there's a lot of cars out there that don't have any kind of voice input. Hmm. But that, this the hard part for me is why not mount your phone? Is, is mounting your phone not enough? Do you do you really miss having a knob? Uh, maybe some people do. Yeah. It's very weird. Maybe that's why they called it car thing, because they know it's weird. They're like, hey, let's just experiment. Sure. See what happens. Uh, anyway, you can you can control it with voice. You can listen to your podcast. You can listen to your music. But you guys tell me in the comments, is this exactly what you've been looking for? Or, or I mean, I'm kind of curious. 